This is the PixInsight process tutorial for subframe selector. You find it in Process, Image Inspection, Subframe Selector. Subframe selector is like the brother of Blink. While in Blink you do the image inspection and selection based on visual indications, in subframe selector you do it based on data. And as you can see, whenever it gets into data, it gets complex. And that's why you have not one, not two, no three windows which open when you open the subframe selector. But that's not the only complex thing. This process is heavily disputed, discussed, and everybody has a very strong opinion about it. If it should be used, when it should be used, how it should be used. So let's dive first into these questions. So the first discussion point, should you use first Blink, then subframe selector, or first the subframe selector and then Blink? My answer doesn't matter at all. Do it in whichever way you feel most comfortable. Second discussion point, do you need to calibrate the pictures first before you put it into subframe selector or not? Here the answer is from my perspective pretty clear. If you shoot the pictures in only one session, you do not have to calibrate it because the relativity between each other is enough to actually see which one are good, which one are bad. If you shoot multiple nights and you want to actually evaluate all of these photos together to just pick the best ones, then yes, you have to first calibrate it because each night might have different conditions, the flats might have been different and so on. And the third and definitely hardest question is, does it even need the subframe selector at all? So let me answer this question in different layers. First of all, it depends if you actually do the stacking within PixInsight or by another software like, for example, AstroPixel Processor. If you use the AstroPixel Processor, you do not have to use the subframe selector as the AstroPixel Processor has a possibility to actually tell him a percentage of exposures it can discard based on the quality. And from my perspective, this is exactly what you do here, but more in a manual sense. And it's one of the reasons why I use the AstroPixel processor, because this here, the subframe selector, looks to me a little bit like driving stick shift, when you could drive an automatic. So whenever it's about data, I expect that a computer can do that better than myself. With Blink, it's a different story, because there it's about the visual impression. That's something a computer can to date, not do the same good as a human being. But let's go back to Pix Insight. Also, here we have the group of people who state that the weighted batch preprocessing script does a good enough job and hence the subframe selector is not needed anymore. And then there's the group of people who still feel more comfortable to root the worst pictures out here themselves before leave the rest up to the computer. And that's really up to you and up to your personal feeling. So that all said, let's assume you want to use the subframe selector. And now I tell you how it works. So the first thing we do, we go to this window here and we click on add files. And here we actually load all our files we want to inspect in it. We select them, say open and they're in. Next, there is these system parameters. And here you could add a lot of stuff like the subframe rate of your the camera gain and so on. Now, as long as you do not care about the absolute values and you're only interested in the relative values, so to compare one picture to another, you do not have to fill that in. Otherwise, it makes sense to do that. The whole rest of the parameters you can leave as they are and simply click here on the global function. And now the magic starts and you have a nice little graph in here. So let me explain that to you. Up here you have all the pictures and whenever you want, you can actually double click on one and it would open the picture. But as I said, we're here data driven, so that's not the main thing. As long as there's a green check mark here, 
the picture is included. If you double click it, you get a red cross. You also see it down here, which means this picture will be excluded. So the curve here at the moment shows the PSF signal weight, which is one of the main weights that actually the weighted batch preprocessing script uses. And the other main cumulative weight that is used is actually the signal to noise ratio weight. But if you want to evaluate the pictures based on that, this is actually already done by the weighted batch preprocessing. So you do not have to go specially for that into the subframe selector. But it's more that we actually look specifically for other factors to make our own selection. And for me, the best one is stars. So what you see here per picture is how many stars were identified in a picture. This goes up to 640 and down to about 380. So it's a huge difference. And that's a very clear criteria. If only 380 stars were identified, something was really messed up. Either there was a clown in the picture or there was a huge guiding error, wasn't in focus or anything did go wrong. Otherwise, more stars would have been identified, especially if we know that in the best case, almost 640 stars were there. So we want now to eliminate all pictures which have really small star counts. And these are usually the ones, at least, who are below this light gray threshold, which is at about 410-ish, 420 stars. So how do we do that? One possibility is by hand. You simply double click here and it eliminates it. You double click here, it eliminates it, and so on. So that's one way. The other way you can go is you can go here over to the expressions. Now you will probably expect here some kind of a pull down, something, you know, a user friendly UI. Not in Pix Insight, obviously. You have to type it. So we type in stars, and it's case sensitive, by the way. We want to have them larger than 420. We click on execute, and as you can see now, all these stars below 420 stars are already exited. Also, you see it up here, they all have now a red cross, so they will not be included anymore. So whatever way is more comfortable for you. So another thing we might look at is the FWHM, which is the full width at half maximum. And what it is, in principle, the star size. So obviously, the bigger the stars, the less focused they were. And interestingly enough, what you can see is that most, but not all pictures we already excluded had kind of enlarged star size, but not all. So we also can here check where's the threshold, and we can say it's about 8.55. So we have to give here an AND command, go a line down and say FWHM should be smaller than 8.55. We execute it again, and you see now all these pictures are also included. So these would be the pictures I would include. And now I want to show you why potentially it makes sense to do that, and why to not leave it up to the weighted batch preprocessing. Because I go now into this PSF signal weight, which is actually one of the main factors of the weighted batch preprocessing. And look at that. Most of these pictures are nicely actually in the middle. And if we go to the signal noise ratio, same again. So from my perspective, I see a high likelihood that these pictures actually would have been included, while we now, based on pretty good reasons, exclude them. So now having actually decided which pictures we want to delete, we are now changing back to the first window here. And what we do on the top in routine, we change now from measure subframes to output subframes. And now we have to choose a directory where we want to have the good pictures in there. I created already one, good. I say open. So be careful, this is the opposite one to Blink. In Blink you define a directory where you want to have the trash. Here you define a directory where you want to have the good pictures. And once you have done that, you click again here on global, 
And now let's see what Pix Inside has done. And that's crucial. So here I have the original files. They have the fits format. Now we go in my new directory. Good. And look at that. XISF. So out of whatever odd reason, Pix Inside that does not simply copy the files from one directory to the other, but it actually recreates them and puts it in its own format. Now, as long as you continue in PixInsight, this is no issue at all. It's probably even better. But in the case that you would like to use the subframe selector and then take the files and put it, for example, in Astro Pixel Processor, you have a huge problem because Astro Pixel Processor does not support XISF. So you actually have to reconvert them again. So this is just something to keep in mind. As long as you're going on in PixInsight, no problem. You have now here your pictures and you actually start now the stacking. If you want to continue in any other software, what you're doing is you do not use this function, but you simply remember which ones you actually want to exclude and you exclude them manually. And that's actually all I can tell you for the subframe selector. I hope this was helpful and if it was, please give me a like and press the subscribe button. It's appreciated. See you next time and clear skies.